Are you a ripper? Kick, flip your sick board and get ready to drop in. Is this it? Am I doing it? Hang on for the loop! Four, three, two, one. I'm Ricky. I'm Jamie. Ricky, are you much of a skateboarder? I used to skateboard way back in the day. Uh, not with a, a board much smaller than this. Like I used to like have a little tiny skateboard. Like this is called a little tech deck and you used to be able to do little, little fun little kick flips and things like that. On, on these boards, no, absolutely not. Oh, okay. I thought, okay, so you don't mean that you skateboarded with your fingers. I do. Oh, you do mean that. And I also mean that the skateboards were like super tiny. They were like this big. Yay big. Oh, okay, I see. Like this. Okay, well that was actually my first time on a skateboard. No way! Yeah. You did good. Ah, thank you. I was a little scared at first, uh, but then it got fun. Yeah. yeah. I think that describes my experience with skateboarding in <laughs> life as well. So, just because we believe we can skateboard doesn't automatically make us a skateboarder. We have to be on the board and we have to be practicing. Yeah, so you're saying it's not enough to just believe, but you have to put that into action. Yeah, just like our faith. It has to be up and running, fully operational, and alive with action. Yeah, durable faith is looking for opportunities to jump in head first. But a free fall can be kind of scary. If you want your faith to be alive, but you're having a hard time trusting God, then this episode is for you. Let's jump right in. Hey, I'm wondering if you guys could handle a very honest confession today. You think you'd handle it, like really handle it? I'll be just real transparent with you and make this confession. I am a pastor, and sometimes I find it difficult to put all my trust in God. Can I be that real? Do any of you ever feel that way? I, I want to trust in God, but sometimes I find it a little bit more difficult to trust in Him. It's easier to say, trust in God, than it is to often to do this. You might be able to relate. You might feel like, I love God, and I believe in God, but I still feel so uneasy about the future. So often you may look around and you, you ask yourself, like, what if and start playing the what if game, what if so and so happens as life goes on, and it's really easy to ask a lot of what ifs in the current climate and environment. Like, I wanna trust God, but sometimes I just wanna say, God, it's difficult to trust in a God I can't see. Hey Luke, it's Jason, and if you haven't figured it out yet, this is my son, Roy. Hey Luke. So Roy, first question, this is serious. Are you a skateboarder? Yes. Are you a good skateboarder? Yeah. Okay. Like if someone else wanted to become a good skateboarder, how would they become a good skateboarder? Um, they would get a skateboard, helmet, pads. If they get a skateboard, then they're a good skateboarder? No. Oh, they need pads too? No. Oh, okay, go ahead. They, they would need to try to skate. Try to skate. And then you're just gonna keep working your way up. So you gotta get a skateboard, go somewhere where you can actually skate, maybe have some tools and stuff, like pads or whatever you need, some yeah. help, and then you gotta actually just do it. Yeah. Okay. So this is making me think about something. Does any of this remind you of following Jesus? Yeah. Okay, and tell me what popped in your mind. Okay, um, like, you know how your pads would get scraped up? Yeah. That would be good for them because that shows you that you're skating. Ah, it means you've been doing it. Yes. If your pads are perfect, then you haven't been out there doing anything. So like right when I got my new, brand new pads, I was trying to clean them off and everything. <laughs> but then I noticed I'm just gonna keep scratching them right. and getting them dirty. So if you're following Jesus, then you gotta actually like get out there yeah. and do stuff. Yeah. And that, you might get scraped up a little bit. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Okay. Um, so this is kind of making me think like, you know, if someone just believes in God, that's a good thing, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. But just believing in God and then not doing anything about it, that doesn't make you a Christian any more than like just believing in skateboarding makes you Tony Hawk or something. Is yeah. that kind of what you're saying? Yeah. Okay. So when I think about skateboarding and learning to skateboard with you, do you remember at first how bad I was? Yeah. Like, like stepping on that board, <laughs> It was like, it was like believing in something that I couldn't see. I mean, the first, how many times did I just 
fall, just going like this slow, and then I would fall. I don't know, like, okay? a lot. But then I kept practicing, and I kept doing it, and I kept doing it, and now I'm faster than you, right? Uh, no. <laughs> okay, but seriously, a practiced faith makes for a confident faith. Could you agree with that? Yeah. All right, good. Ooh. What's this, Ricky? This is a smart watch encased in Jello, the most durable substance that we had access to. Wait, this looks like my smart watch. Well, you weren't wearing it, so I just. Oh. So James is gonna climb up this ladder and she's gonna drop it, and we're gonna see if this Jello is gonna protect it. Which I think, spoiler alert, this is going to shatter and make a very mm. messy mess. I don't think it's durable enough to protect the smart watch. There's only my one way smart. To... Wait. We'll see. Climb that ladder! Climb that ladder! Climb that ladder! All right. Okie doke. Okay, here you go. All right, wonderful. My smartwatch. And here we go! <gasps> Whoa! Did you see the vertical on that? Oh my goodness! Like, it had like at least, uh, I'd say like a three inch vertical. That was and, amazing! Oh, <laughs> and look, it came on! Yay! My smartwatch still works! Yeah! says we have, uh, uh, you've taken 113 out of 10,000 steps. Then we gotta charge this thing soon. Okay. Yeah, and I need more steps. Okay, so Ricky, has God ever prompted you to do something? And if so, what happened? Hmm, um, well, uh, one time, mm -hmm. uh, I broke up with my girlfriend, uh -huh. um, and we had all the same friend group, and it felt like I no longer had access to those friends, and I felt Aww. very sad and lonely. But I, uh, but God really prompted me to reach out to this mm -hmm. other group of friends that I really wasn't spending a lot of time with, mm -hmm. uh, and I was nervous yeah. that, like, you know, they wouldn't accept me or that I wouldn't fit in because I hadn't really been spending a lot of time with these people. Right. But um, they welcomed me in, and Aww. they were um, some of my closest friends, and we have so many memories together because I I decided to reach out to them, and I'm really glad that I listened to that prompt yeah, there. Yeah, that's awesome. Very cool. You got some durable friendships through that. Yeah. How about you, Jamie? I remember one time God prompted me to not gossip when I was with my friends, and I was really scared that my friends would think that, you know, I wasn't cool or that, um, you know, I was scared that I also wouldn't fit in because I feel like sometimes gossiping is a way to fit in, um, as messed up as that sounds. Uh, but I went ahead and I followed what God wanted me to do. He didn't want me to gossip. It was scary, but I did it. And then it actually started catching on with my other friends as well. And they tried to not gossip too. That's incredible, Jamie. Thanks. I'm glad you listened to that. <laughs> yeah, me too. All right, well, we are going to check back in with Jason. Let's see what he's up to. Okay, Loop and Roy. Now we need to talk about how to practice your faith. Can you help me out with this one again? Yeah. All right, good. I think we can break this down into three like really simple parts. First, there's the nudge, okay? Then the drop-in, and then the other side. So for this first one, the nudge, can you get that for me? Yeah. Can you go get that? All right, so the nudge. This is when you just really wanna do something, like from the inside, you wanna do something loving or good, and it checks out with people you trust and with who Jesus is, and yeah, I mean, you just wanna do it. God is guiding you at this point. The second one is crazy. It can be the scariest part, but also the funnest part of following Jesus, the drop-in, okay? This is when you walk up to the edge of that new thing and you don't wanna get all in your head about it. You just need to trust and lean in and do it because God is with you. The next one, Roy, help me out one more. The other side. This is when you've dropped in and now you can look back behind you and that scary thing that was in front of you is now the ground you're standing on. It's what's behind you. And this is when your confidence in God grows. This is when your faith grows. So yeah, three parts. It's the nudge, the drop-in, and the other side. For if we are faithful to the end, trusting God just as firmly as when we first believed, we will share in all that belongs to Christ. Hebrews 3, 14. Okay guys, so throwing this off the ladder was one thing, but now we're gonna try throwing it off the roof and to see if this material is durable. 
Here's hoping my smartwatch survives. All right, X marks the spot. Here we go. Oh, my goodness. Jamie! Woo, yay! This thing, it's still in there. My smartwatch survived, woohoo! I've got to tell you, Loop, this last year while I've been learning to skateboard has actually been a really hard year for practicing my faith. Uh, it actually reminds me of times when I would stand like in the bottom of one of these huge 11 foot drops and Roy would be at the top with his skateboard. There was no way I was gonna be at the top. Roy would be at the top. He'd walk up to the edge and just kind of like look over, maybe even put his board out there and he'd get all in his head about it and he'd walk away. So my faith has kind of been on edge for a year. And uh, honestly, the thing I was worried about was walking away. I was worried about losing my faith. And so this part's almost kind of funny if you think about it. I would be praying and talking to God and I'd be like, God, I, I feel like I don't believe in you enough <laughs> or stuff like that. Like I'm talking to him, you get it? So then I would be like going around living my life and loving people and doing the right thing and reading about Jesus and scripture and trying to live the way he lived but I was just struggling with the stuff that I couldn't see, right? Struggling with faith. Here's what I realized. All that stuff is practice. That was practice too. When you practice and you practice hard, you get even better. You get those scratches on your pads that Roy was talking about earlier. The Bible calls this working out your faith with fear and trembling. So, Loop, I'm just curious. What is it that you're thinking about dropping in on? Is it maybe true that the only way that you're gonna believe in it or believe that you can do it is if you just do it? That nudge that you're feeling, that's God. That's his confidence in you that you can get past your fear and get to the other side because he's with you, right? And he's not just with you for that ride, that drop down in. He's standing at the bottom and he's believing in you and he's cheering you on, waiting at the bottom of your drop. And the good news is, outcome is God's responsibility. Obedience is yours. Lord, help me to trust you, even when I don't understand. What I promise you is God will prompt you. In some way, he'll invite you to trust him. And what you'll discover is that big miracles often follow simple acts of obedience. All right, so now we're gonna eat this. No, no. No, no, we're not. <laughs> I don't recommend eating jello that has been thrown off of a roof. Any, any, any height. It's just not. Onto a parking lot. Yeah, there's no five second rule that can save you with this. So what we're gonna do now is we are going to dig in and see how the watch held up. Do you think <laughs> it still has a tick going on? I believe it does. I think that this material was durable. Okay, let's see. Let's take a look. Oh. Okay, go for it. All right. Oh my goodness. <gasps> Yay, right. my smart watch. Oh, okay, take it out. Ooh, oh, yay. Wow. Oh, okay, so now we have to see. <gasps> It's still ticking. All right, how many steps? Is that 840? 840. 40? Wow. Yeah. That was a lot. Loopsters, we want you to be faithful to the end. Make your faith durable by connecting with God daily. And listen for that nudge. Take a step and trust that God will guide you through to the other side. When you trust God, anything is possible. So drop in. And as you free fall into faith, remember to enjoy, enjoy the ride. ride. <laughs> I, I can't believe that this held up. I know, it did so good. Good job, Jello.
Jamie, do you remember when we did the uh, the egg drop challenge? Absolutely, I do. We dropped Benedict off of the roof, but we put him in like a safe little uh, transportation before we did. Yeah, so check out that video and watch us tear this Jello apart. Ah, ah, Jello! Oh, wow. Look at that. That is a big piece of Jello. Hmm.